Hey guys, how you doing? So today I'm gonna go over the things that I do not like about my 2011 Jaguar XJ. Um, before I start, um, first, um, if you like my video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I will be doing a 1,000 subscriber worldwide giveaway of a Visa or whatever gift card, um, so stay tuned for that. Another, dis another disclaimer is um, that no car is perfect. This is my dream car. I was able to get this car for an amazing deal and I absolutely love it. It is a showstopper. It is an amazing vehicle. It is just everything that I've wanted in a car. But there are things that I do not like about this car, just like things that I do not like about every other car that I want to tell you guys about so that uh, I don't want to just be biased and show you guys all the good in this car. Now, this car does not have a lot of seriously bad things. So in order to make a video on this, I had to actually nitpick. So these videos, majority of them get a lot of dislikes. But again, guys, I mean, if you don't like what I say, I mean, I'm just being honest with you guys. because I want to be honest with you guys who actually are interested in this vehicle and just want to see every single aspect of this vehicle from someone who's actually owned the vehicle for over a year. First thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about the, uh, the key. There's an option in this key that you actually, if you hold down the unlock button, the windows will go down. All four windows will go down, not the sunroof. Now, my issue is that with this car and other cars just like it that do the same thing, you cannot put the windows up. So even if you hold the lock button, the windows will not go up and close. And I find that to be an absolutely major flaw with this feature. If you're in your office, you want to put your windows down because it's nice and sunny out and hot, you could do that. But if it starts to rain, you can't put them up. You got to go all the way back down and close the windows manually in the car. And I know that you shouldn't be putting down your windows anyway if it's about to rain, but today, there's no rain in the schedule today, but it looks like it's going to rain. It's pretty hot. It's about 75 degrees right now, and I'm, I would put my windows down, but I, now I wouldn't even use that feature anymore because I can't put the windows up. And that is a real downside. Next issue. I'm not sure how this is actually overlooked, but that is the rear cup holders. Now, you're looking at the rear armrest, you think the cup holders are in the front, right? So let's open it. No, there's no cup holders there, but let's open the back one. Well, that's odd. The cup holders are right there. How am I going to use the armrest if I have some cup holders? Now, I can go like this and be very awkward, or I can just hold a cup in my own arm. That, that's really, it's a, it's a real design flaw and a real overlook. I'm not sure why the cup holders are here when they couldn't be right here. If they were right in front, I could comfortably have my cups here and have my arm here. But now they're in the back, it just conflicts with this whole armrest. And I think it's a real overlook and something that really should be fixed in future XJs if it hasn't has been, if it hasn't have been fixed already. Next thing, we're gonna go to the front. The next issue I have is with Spotify. So if you have Spotify on your phone and you play some songs on it, the the system, Bowers and Wilkins Sound System, which is one of the best, check my other videos on my review on that sound system. You, in order, when you're playing a song, in order to have really loud, crisp volume on some songs on Spotify, you have to have it on 58, almost a max volume. And there are some times where I have it on max volume and I want more volume out of the song and my phone is on max and the speakers are on max and I have no uh, way of making it louder. And this really comes out of Spotify. Spotify is an issue sometimes with this system. The, the, the songs that come out of Spotify, I think are not full quality, even though I have it set on the full quality version. Because when I play songs off my iPod, my, my, my songs that are actually downloaded to my iPhone, I can get to probably, let's say, you know, around, around here before it gets really, really loud. And then if I go up to here, it's like blowing the speakers off. And I still have that much more room to play with. So I'm not sure if that's a Spotify issue or this, you know, just the song issue, the song itself is low, but that's something that really um, 
It's upsetting to me. The next issue is the blind spot monitoring. So this car does have blind spot monitoring, as you see a little light there in the window. Um, it, um, it will alert you when there's a car next to you by lighting up an icon over here, but all it does is light up that icon. If I was to put my blinker on and that icon was lit, it would not make an audio alert nor a visual alert that there is someone in my blind spot. That light would not blink. It would stay the same and I could still put my blinker on and go over the, into the lane, into that car, and it would not alert me. It would just show me that icon. Um, you should always be looking at that, but regardless, in new cars and even like other cars, if you put your blinker on when there's someone in your blind spot, it will blink, that will blink, and it'll also give you an auditory warning on the screen. So I think that's a really big letdown. Um, the, um, the chrome in this vehicle is absolutely beautiful, but one issue is that it's so beautiful and so shiny that sometimes the sun, if it hits it at the right angle, will blind you. Even if you open this, the sun hits here or over there or on the shifter, it blinds you. And it's, um, it's a little overwhelming. Um, I do love the chrome. I absolutely love it. So I will handle the, the um, blindness sometimes, but it's something to be aware of with the chrome in this vehicle. Um, another issue that I have is that only the rear have the um, grab handles, not the front. And a lot of you guys will say, oh, you don't need the grab handles in the front. What are you doing? You're supposed to be driving. But I like to sit sometimes, hold the grab handle right here when I'm driving, have my arm on the window, and hold the grab handle. Even when I'm stopped, sometimes I like to grab the go hold the grab handle. And there's just not one up here, and I'm not even sure why, but it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, like I said, guys, I have to nitpick for this video. The, um, the next issue is that the fuses in this vehicle. So there are fuses under the hood, but there are also fuses under the rear seat. So if a fuse blows that's under the rear seat, you have to actually take out the entire seat and to access those fuses. And that is a pain. It is an issue to put it back, an issue to take it off, and I hope that none of those fuses in my vehicle ever blow. I believe that is a major design flaw and it, that should be changed in future vehicles as well. Um, another issue that I don't like is that there is no sunglass holder. Um, again, I don't really use sunglasses that much, but I do like to have the holder up here. It is actually taken over by the lights and the switches, but I would like to have seen a sunglass holder instead of me putting my sunglasses in my glove box. Um, common issue with this vehicle is that this system is very slow, very slow. You push the screen, you have to push very hard for it to load and to switch from each to each, it looks quick to you. But when you first start this vehicle sometimes and you put it in reverse, there's supposed to be a reverse camera that comes on like as quickly as you see this vehicle. So as quickly as you see it happen right now. But what happens sometimes is that when you first start this vehicle, after it sits for a while, you'll see a Jaguar logo on here and you could put the car in reverse and literally wait one whole minute before the screen changes to the reverse logo. It does happen only when you start the car after a while and when the car sometimes is warming up. It just, it's, 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 it's a, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes, it, you know, acts up and it is a very annoying issue. Then you have to actually look behind you and try to reverse. And as you can see, the um, visibility in, this back of, in the back of this car is very limited. It is a very small window back there. And this car is very big and it's very hard to see when you're reversing. So you really do need that backup camera. Um, one of my actual very very big gripes with this car is the trunk key. Trunk button on the key. Trunk button on this key is one touch operation. You push it once and the trunk opens. I can't do it on the key so I will do it on the, uh, the button in the car. So that's a cool feature. You push the button and the trunk opens, right? But two things. First, you cannot push this button again to close the trunk.
And the main issue is that this button is so sensitive. One touch, one touch will activate the trunk. If this key is in your pocket and you accidentally touch that button, the trunk will open and you will have no idea that the trunk opened. If you are in your office and you push this button by accident and it is, let's say, God forbid, downpouring outside, your trunk will open and your car will be flooded and you will have no idea that it happened. This should not be a such an easy button to push. It should not be one touch trunk. It should be at least a double click or if not hold to open the trunk. I'm always paranoid to have this key in my pocket that my trunk is actually opened. It is, um, it's a real oversight on this key and it's something to really keep, you know, it's something to really keep in mind when you carry this key in your pocket. Another issue with this car is that when you are driving and you slow down to a stop, if you are in second gear, the downshift to first gear is a jerk. A lot of time, this, this, the early version of this car has a transmission that will jerk from second to first when you brake or, or go come to a stop. And that jerk is very uncomfortable. It is, um, it feels like a little jerk like this. Like the car will move. Um, and it feels like um, just the transmission just is very clunky at that point. It doesn't happen all the time when, it goes, when you downshift from second to first, but it does happen often, and it is a really big letdown um, um, every time you stop. I always, I always look for that little jerk when the car goes down to first, and like I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it, I'm coming to a stop here, and then bam, there it is. And it's just, um, it's just a feature, it's just something that this car has. Um, a lot of them from this year have it, and something to keep in mind. Um, the seat settings in this car are very good, as they um, they save your settings even if you remove the battery or your car dies. However, one issue I don't like is that they do not save your lumbar settings. So if you set your lumbar and someone else uses your car and sets it a different way, your lumbar is not saved in these settings. So you have to remember where your lumbar was and reset it. And this is not just a lumbar that just goes in and out, in and out. It actually goes up and down, in and out. So it's not you know, like I'm just saying, oh, just push it back out. You have to find the position where it was in again and push it back out again. And I have I see no reason why this wouldn't, this shouldn't save your lumbar. Um, speaking about battery issues, this car has, a, has a, it, it drains a battery a lot. It really drains your battery. Um, if you have this car sit for a while, it'll say um, low battery, please start engine. Um, uh, just keep that in mind, especially in the colder months. Uh, if you sit for like, this car sits for like a week or two, you may actually have to jump this vehicle. Um, if you're away, you should have someone start the vehicle every now and then. Uh, just, you know, this car is drained, has a lot of electronics in this car, just has a drain. Um, the, um, another issue with this car. So these cars are obviously, um, this year of this car, 2010, 2011, they're out of warranty. And these cars, let's face it, these cars were bought by, you know, older men, who had Jaguar do the work for them. Now these cars are getting affordable where you know younger people can actually afford to buy these cars. Um, but the issue is that it's not like an S class where you know a lot of young people buy the car and a lot of whole cult following on it. This car did not sell anywhere near the S class, the amount of units. Therefore, the, the issue is the lack of available knowledge online for DIY jobs on this car. The lack of knowledge is immense. There, you cannot find almost the videos to find on this car. is is It's very hard. It's very hard to find a video on how to take a door panel off. There's maybe one on YouTube. Last time I checked, how to change your oil the proper way. I don't even see one on there. I'm gonna make one myself, by the way. How to um, how to take this off. How to um, how to uh, set um, if in case the car can't turn on. How to actually you know put the car out of park with a special switch. That's all under here, but there's no videos that show you how to do that. There's no videos that show you how to change, you know, valve, cover, gasket, or like, in general, other things on this car, there are not that many videos about, and it's a real letdown, and, and you gotta keep that in mind when you're gonna be getting this car, that if you don't have a mechanic, and you're looking to do a DIY job, it's gonna be pretty hard for you in this car, because the lack of available knowledge online. So it's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, Another 
thing I don't like is that my friend's 2010 S-Class, you're able to control the fan speed for each quadrant of the vehicle. So I can have my fan speed on max as the driver and, um, and um, passenger minimum. But this car, the fan speed is the same throughout the entire car. Even though it's quad climate, you can't have a fan speed lower than this. And I, that's one of my biggest issues with this car is that, you know, my girlfriend just want the fan on her, but I want the fan on me. So she has to close her vents. My friend back there, he wants his fan on him full blast. And sometimes and I want my fan on me and I have to close my vents. And I really don't want to have to do that because I can't close the down vents. I can't close those. So it would just be on me the entire time. And it's no one's going to be happy when it comes to that situation. And I really wish this car had quad fan climate control. Um... The um, other issue that I have with this car that I don't like and it should have had, the sun visor does not extend. No matter what you do, if you pull it, it will not extend. And every other car that I've had, especially every, every other car in this segment, the, they, um, they extend. And this does not extend. And there's an area right here that the sun gets into my eyes frequently. And I find it, you know, really annoying how they couldn't make this extend. I mean, I know it's a little bit, it's pretty small over here, but it's still... An area where the sun gets through and this is a car that you know should be over engineered and the, the <laughs> if they don't have this my lexus rx has a feature even since 04 that it pulls open and i saw no reason why they shouldn't have had that um another issue is that you know this uh, there's a lot of electronics in this car so the uh the dashboard gets pretty dusty this is something to keep in mind um and the last issue i have with this car is the plague of sticky buttons so in this car these buttons over time with heat and age they have this top layer that gets sticky and a lot of these buttons especially the one right here are extremely sticky and it is just unpleasant to touch you touch a certain button in this car and your hands remain sticky throughout the entire day it is it's plagued in this car there are a lot of buttons over here especially up here this is extremely sticky up there. These buttons over here have gone, done good. Um, some of these are actually starting to get sticky. The window switches um, in the back are starting to get sticky. And the entire panel back here, the entire buttons down here are sticky as all hell. And it is just a, it is this such an issue with this car when it comes to sticky buttons because um, to fix these buttons there is a way to fix it Tavares made a video about it they um it is annoying to do but um it's just that you know in the newer months they fix this this issue but a lot of these old xj's have very sticky buttons and it's just something that you know you're gonna have to deal with thank god it's the um the cancel button for the uh cruise control which i never use um the buttons that i use every day just maybe they made it as something different so they don't get sticky but these have not gotten sticky i'm not sure but that is really, um, that's really it, you know. There's not much to say about this car in, in, in negativity-wise. Um, overall, this car is an absolutely amazing car, and the positive things heavily outweigh the negative things. Again, guys, I am being very nitpicking with this car, but I have to because there's just not many serious negatives. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget about that 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, let me know if I should improve anything or any other videos that you want to see. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.